Okay, groups, let's go with wireless power transmission. This is going to be the best presentation ever. My name is Kathleen Cash, and here we go. Yeah, give us a hand. Thank you, thank you. Okay. We're going to... Uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna start with conventional history because you have to understand where um, power came from. Then we're gonna have Dan go from conventional, history or conventional power to wireless power. And then Trish is gonna talk about the current applications of wireless power. And then we got Brett ending with the future. So conventional power. Basically it comes down to when there's conventional power, it comes down to do two different energies. One is fossil fuels and the other one's re renewable energies. This includes things like from the sun, wind power. So fossil fuels that we're going to talk about is going to be wood, coal, steam, and electricity. Go back, sorry. Wood is going to be, wood and coal have been used, or wood has been, bleh, wood has been used from the very beginning with people. So things like when they're using wood, they're using it for light, they're using it to cook food, they're using it to like make heat. Um, the same with the coal. Coal is for light sources to, to make heat. Um, steam is when you use liquid and you warm it up and it makes um, some vapors. Um, and so what happened was throughout history we had inventors who, who used these basic fossil fuels and created technologies that would empower um, like everyday uses. One of the things with the steam is the steam engine. Um, coal is when we have, they use them into generators to power um, electricity and other sources to us. Uh, finally is about electricity. Um, electricity, sorry go on Dan. Electricity, everybody thinks it started with Ben Franklin when he had the kite and the key attached to it electri and the lightning hit it. Um, that might have been like the start of him understanding how to harness energy, but really it started with Michael Faraday. And Michael Faraday, he is the first inventor, uh, let me get to him. Um, he was the first inventor who could, who actually understood electric unit, a uh, current being passed through a magnet and a copper wire. So he understood that, um, like, he understood that the, the electricity went from the wire and it flew through the um, copper and that's how the light and the heat source coming. Uh, Thomas Edison is right close behind him with the creation of the light bulb. He also had the creation of the direct uh, current, which is um, the direct current allowed the factories to make power and that would generate like the electricity and other sources to a close vicinity. Um, then George Washington, which I now just realized the name, but anyway, George Washington then did the, uh, <laughs> sorry, the electric, <laughs> their alternating current, which was just a more of an extension of the direct current and made the power go out farther than what Thomas Edison can do. And then we'll talk a little bit more about Nikola Tes Tesla, but he also t did the AC, the alternating um, current, and then also had the vision for wireless technology. What? No, no, this is, a, this is an inventor. George Washington is the inventor. Yeah, definitely. All okay. right, uh, next, sorry. One of the things when it comes to using our fossil fuels is, of course, we're talking about global warming. Um, we use more fossil fuels that's in de decreasing them, and it's also causing more of a problem with the global warming um, situation. Um, some of the things that they're doing to try and make it better is talking about energy policy, which is, um, giving them a amount of uh, amount that people can use but that's not being um, done now and then they also are talking about how things need to be changed like using solar and wind power things next is going to be Dan talking about the evolution uh, we're going to talk about Nikola Tesla uh, late in the 1800s early 1900s uh, his vision was to use um, coils giant coils to transmit power wirelessly through the air uh, it's basically through the troposphere, uh, which is the lower uh, part of the atmosphere, the Earth's atmosphere, to power homes around the world. Uh, because of this idea, um, you know, he, funding was pulled by his financial backers because they didn't know of a way to meter that power use. <coughs> Next. Uh, We've got uh, advantages and disadvantages of both wired and wireless technology. Um, some of the disadvantages are power loss uh, because of the resistance of the wires themselves. 
and uh, the amount of raw materials taking up the wires. Uh, the power loss due to resistance is uh, estimated at about 26 percent. Um, the raw materials, uh, it's mainly copper. Uh, copper supplies are dwindling in the, in the world. Uh, and then you've got the unsightly mess of wires. Uh, you can see that uh, in the classroom as well. Uh, advi advantages is, uh, so far it's more reliable than wireless. Um, the technology is known and we're comfortable with it. Uh, the, techno the infrastructure is in place uh, in much of the developed world. <coughs> uh, disadvantages of wireless uh, uh, technology. Uh, the technology, w wireless disadvantages are the technology is not known to most consumers. Uh, the health risks are unknown, uh, could be cancer causing, uh, needs to be more research done. Uh, we have the ability to meter power easily. Uh, the wire goes into a meter, goes out of the meter, and we can tell how much power is used. Uh, the current technology only allows transmission across uh, small distances. Uh, interference, uh, some siding and stucco screen wires uh, interfere with wireless. Uh, advantages, uh, we may uh, be able to allow remote areas access to uh, wireless uh, power. Uh, there's no cords, no wires, nothing to trip over. And then there's the potential for higher efficiencies than wired technology. Uh, the first uh, uh, wireless power that we're going to talk about is radio frequency. Uh, Powercast of Pennsylvania, they have a system capable of extracting power from radio frequencies. Uh, the potential for this uh, uh, technology is to trickle charge battery operated devices, cell phones, laptops, that sort of thing. Disadvantage is uh, interference caused by metal surfaces. The next is induction. Uh, these are uh, uh, where portable devices are placed on charging pads um, uh, and uh, coupling the pad with the electronics in the device. Uh, a company by the name of Splash Power has created a charging mat for portable recharging devices. Uh, the disadvantage is only a few of these devices are available in the world today, so um, it's, it's catching on, but very slowly. Uh, the potential is to couple the charging technology with a portable device to introduce it to more people. So, uh, Then we've got adaptive inductive coupling. Uh, this uh, technology is intelligent enough to manage varying loads in the secondary coil. So it's allowed, it allows the configuration to change where the conduction is most effective. Uh, a company by the name of Visteon uses this technology. They created a drawer inside of a car for recharging portable devices. And then there's microwaves. This requires a microwave source and an antenna. Um, the current size of the transmitter and receiver uh, limit this technology. Um, technology or, uh, I'm sorry, microwaves suffer diffraction over long distances, so uh, the uh, receiver and transmitter have to be huge to be able to handle that. Uh, this technology is uh, cost prohibitive due to the size and uh, equipment costs. Uh, obstacles to overcome. Uh, there's interference. Uh, again, uh, aluminum siding, stucco, uh, wiring, that sort of thing. Uh, is wireless power transmission compatible with biology and ecology? That's what needs to be re uh, uh, looked at and studied. Uh, current regulatory guidelines, more research is needed. Again, uh, could be a cancer-causing agent. Uh, performance versus efficiency needs to be studied. Is it, is it worth the performance and efficiency uh, to transfer over from a wired technology to a wireless. And then uh, unknown side effects cannot be evaluated in a lab setting. We all have heard of technologies that uh, 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 have been put out and then later on they've been determined to cause other issues. Alrighty, and uh, I'm going to talk pretty quick about uh, current applications of wireless power transmission. And how do current applications of wireless transmission work? I'm sure some people may wonder that. So, uh, going on to the next one. Um, here are a few examples of low power transmissions. Um, wireless power is 
divided into two categories. There's low power and high power. And as you can see, here are a few examples of low power transmission, such as control controllers, game controllers, headsets, et cetera. Going on to high power transmission, everything from computers, laptops, televisions, digital photo frames. Um, as we said, it's still kind of on the iceberg, so in years to come, um, it'll probably be more of this around. And uh, we're gonna watch a, about a minute and a half video on how exactly um, the wireless power works. Imagine being able to charge your favorite handheld devices without having to plug in each one. With PowerMat, you can wirelessly charge your favorite devices. So how do you do it? Plug in your power mat just once. Simply enable your favorite device with a receiver and drop and charge. It's totally wireless. Light and sound let you know charging is activated. Plus, there's a magnetic pull. It draws the device in to begin charging. And power mat is smart and fast. When a device is fully charged, it stops delivering power to that device, and only that device, and it charges as fast as the charger that comes with your device. There are two mats to choose from, the home and office mat, and the portable mat. It folds and stores in this portable case, which has a cool magnetic closure. Just drop it in your bag. With power mat, you can charge almost any handheld device. There are dedicated solutions for the most popular phones, games, and music players. Battery doors for BlackBerry. A protective case for the iPhone and iPod Touch. A wrap for the Nintendo DSi and DS Lite. With these dedicated receivers, you put them on just once, and it's drop and charge. It's that easy. Plus, there's a dock for all docking iPods and iPhones. The PowerCube Universal Receiver. With eight tips, it can turn almost any device into a PowerMat-enabled device. Just leave it on your mat, and you'll find tons of stuff in your house that you can charge. That's how you charge stuff without all the cords. With Power Mat, you lose the cords. Okay, we're going to stop it a little short. You guys get the idea of the current applications. Thanks, Trish. All right, really quick, since this is my day, stop what you're doing, put down your pens, put your fingers down, put down your cell phones, everything. Put it all down. Put your pen down. When it comes to my section for Dr. Wabi, you put Rogo said, put my stuff down. All right? I want you right here, focused on me, because this is the future. This is the next big thing since the computer, all right? Next slide. Gotcha. All right, what we talked about is wired technology. No typing now, all right? Stay with me. This is my day. This is what I want. This is my day. We talked about wireless power transmission. Did anybody see a wire on the power mat? Did anybody see the wire? It was plugged in somewhere, right? All right, that's where we're at right now. We have a source where we plug it in the wall, and there's a power mat. But what it is, it's powered to an external source, and you have a little receiver device there. But where are we going in the future? We're going strictly no wires. No wires at all. What we're looking at here right now is the actual first invention of a wireless power transmission. The problem is, is this is a transmitter coil, this is a receiving coil, and a light bulb at the top, 60 watt. The farthest distance they could actually transmit this right now is only seven foot. Next slide. All right, what's going to happen later on? Stay with me, Irv. Stay with me. Right here. Everybody right here with me. Enjoy yourself. Have a good time. Last five minutes. J changes in your daily activities from later on. People and devices will start acting differently, and your power and data will be received differently. We'll be able to go to remote locations like the French Alps where the Gurkhas live in Africa. Don't, don't, don't type. All right? We're going to conserve our natural resources. No more coal. No more fossil fuels. We're going to go to nuclear power plants again in the end. And we're going to sustain energy. Next slide. These are some cool things that are going to happen in the future. We all know about the electrical car already. You go plug it in somewhere. 
this is going to be your new office. Does anybody see any cords in that office? None. Here's the coolest thing I found. A electrical shoe that generates electricity from your shoe to any device that's on your body. Pretty cool, huh? Not bad. Next slide. Later on down the road, this is what we're looking at. Transmitting power from the sun to satellites in the sky. So sun and solar power, satellites to space stations, down to giant transmitters here on Earth and receivers to a central storage unit. And then it's supplied to every house, every school, every device in the world. Next slide. Here's an actual look in space of what it's going to look like. And that's it. What are your questions? Stay with me. Not, I didn't tell you to do not. Questions? Questions, anybody? How much questions? Is, this how is much, my day. How much is the power map? How much is the power map, Trish? <laughs> I didn't do the shopping of it. I, I'm not I sure. I think it's $70. Thank you. <laughs> but it, it, does it only work with uh, attaching that receiver? Yes, yes. correct. It, it you can use any device. You just have to have that power Mac device on the back of it. It doesn't work with all devices. No, not all devices, but the, the antenna is, if this is a mouse here that needs to be powered because it's battery operated, mm -hmm. you'll have a case that goes around this with certain batteries in it and it'll be placed on the power mat and that's how you get your charge. That's the current wireless technology. So, what's the question? So, it's your day, go ahead. Um, <laughs> what's the furthest uh, we've gotten so far? It's at 70 feet with the wireless. Pure wireless power transmission with no cords, absolutely zero cords, is only seven foot, and it's only 40% efficiency. We are 100% efficient on powerless outlet to, to transmit energy to your lamp or your stereo or something like that, even the TV, we have TVs now today. So in other words, if you have a power outlet against the wall and you get a transmitter that plugs into that wall, it'll transmit the power wirelessly to that TV in your house. Does that TV need a certain receiver? Or does the it TV already has a receiver built into it, correct. Okay. So if your neighbor has a TV with a receiver, he could steal that power, right? <laughs> <laughs> correct. <laughs> totally agree with you. No disagreement. That's good day. So yes, later on down the road, ethically and unethically, we're going to get into power stealing. <laughs> Sir. Are there any countries that are actually seriously considering investing in the infrastructure for this? No, it's too costly. The research is being done. Uh, the, probably the most research that's been put into it is for TVs. Um, I know Sony just came out with one earlier this year. Um, but other than that, there's nothing. Are there any countries that really want to embrace this whole wireless? It, it, it's not really a country. What it is right now, it's still in theory, and it's still in development. Uh, you go back to that the guy with the light bulb right here. This gentleman right here is from MIT in the United States, Massachusetts Institute for Technology. All right, these are the guys that are taking it to the next step since Nikolai Tesla, a long time ago. And they started this, this whole process from inductor coupling, and it only was able to go two foot when it first started. And now they've been able to go seven foot with a 100 watt light bulb. So it's, it's getting there, it's, it's still in development. 